Are you tired of nesting if statements? Is your code base becoming more spaghetti with every feature you add? Or do you think something's wrong with your state management? If your answer is yes to any of those, you're gonna love this video. Today, I'm gonna teach you a common programming concept that's widely used in game development. Finite State Machine, aka FSM. As the name suggests, an FSM is an abstraction to describe systems in terms of a finite number of states and transitions between them. The most common examples could be character controllers, NPC behaviors, or even the entirety of any turn-based game. In this implementation, we're gonna hook every state, every transition. You will be surprised at its versatility. So let's get right into it. Firstly, I want to specify the requirements for the FSM. The FSM should be created easily because we might use many instances of it. For ease of use, the FSM should expose only one function which changes its current state, we should be able to define invalid transitions. The FSM should provide callbacks for each moment of the state transition, like before and after of leaving and entering a state. We should be able to define state-specific transitions where both the old state and the new state are included. So let's get the coding. We will use object-oriented approach here. Now I'm going to feed the list of states to the FSM constructor, which will be an array of strings. And we need a variable to contain the current state. I'm going to initialize it as nil. Now let's define our only function. New state will obviously a string. Let's validate it. We also don't want the old state to be equal to the new state. Okay, it's time to implement the callback lists, which will be before enter, after enter. Before leave and after leave. We should initialize those first. Okay, now we're gonna use these callback lists in the change state function. Uh, I forgot setting the new state here. So I'm gonna call the before callbacks here and after callbacks here. So if there is an old state, by that I mean if the old state is not nil, I'm gonna call the before leave callbacks, before leave old state, do f a. Now uh, we're gonna repeat the process or before I enter new state. Actually for simplicity, uh, let me reorganize these really quick. It should be before leave, before enter, after leave, after enter. This is the correct order of execution. All right, now we're gonna repeat the entire process here but with after so uh, our callbacks are ready and now uh, I want to define invalid transitions too let's call it is invalid now uh, it's time to implement the state-specific transitions. Uh, remember, both old state and the new state should be included in those. So let's call it specific transitions. We need an inner loop for that. Now, right before the transition, we will try to invoke these specific state specific transitions actually it's already recommended let's see if it's true 
Old state, new state. All right, that's it. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's put it to the test. And we will see how it's used now. Oh, before that. If i is equal to j, then continue and because uh, there is no actual transition between the same states. Okay, now we are ready to move on to the example. I'm going to build a basic UI and implement the navigation with the FSM so you can see it in action. I'll probably speed this up. I'll use this styling for the buttons. Uh, this one, the highlighted one, will obviously be the selected menu button. Okay, we can get the coding now. I'm gonna creating an FSM instance with the uh, states represented by the buttons. Let's name them. Calling this profile inventory and let's call it stats. All right, FSM dot new profile inventory and stats. Get the references for our buttons. So, firstly, uh, let's remember our callbacks before leave, before enter, after leave, after enter. Okay. We will define it like this FSM before leave profile. Okay, let's write others too before moving on. After leave, after, after. Now uh, I'm gonna assign a function to this. Uh, before leaving profile, I want to remove the highlight from the button. Calling it remove highlight. So profile button dot underline background color three will be the same as this coverage from RGB and I want to uh, toggle the visibility of the shadow text label now uh, applying the highlight uh, it should be invoked after enter Shadow should be visible and oh no. Oh, this is background color. Okay. 218, 218. Okay. Now, as you see, uh, for this example, I didn't need before enter and after leave. So I'm just removing that. Now uh, we need to. Uh, Define the same for the other buttons as well. And you will see the similarity. So I'm just gonna group those expressions on the function. Apply highlight. And remove highlight. Now for removal, copying this, oops, now applying, I'm using those, 
this will be apply highlight profile button and the same for the inventory now repeat it for the stats now all we gotta do is to insert our event listeners and just call fsm change state profile repeat for the other buttons now we need to initialize our fsm change state to profile okay now let's put it to the test works now this is a, a very simple example and looks very verbose i know it uh, i'm not saying this is the best way uh, i'm just trying to prove my point here uh, usually uh, some uh, systems in your game tend to have a very uh, complicated states uh, moreover states within states as uh, finite state machines are usually the way to uh, manage them and the code is very straightforward uh, you don't scroll through a hell of ifs and else ifs uh, something like that uh, but you just read it uh, it's pretty self-explanatory now the beauty of it uh, is that i can insert uh, as many callbacks as I want, like before leaving profile, I'm calling it log. I'm just gonna write print before leave profile state, and let's add more frames to that. I'm just gonna call it mid. Point eight is good. Okay, now you will add more frames. I'm gonna call it profile point by point by one. I'm calling it. Let's make it green. Turn it invisible. Duplicate inventory stats. Inventory will be blue, stats will be reddish. All right, now I'll keep inserting uh, more and more callbacks, calling it hide frame. Let's get frame reference here. Now, before leave, we make the profile frame invisible, and after enter, I'm gonna call it show frame. Okay. Now actually call the change state function at the bottom of the script. You will see the lock uh, and the profile frame turning invisible right now. See? So if I uh, just remove the lock, uh, insert show and hide frame callbacks to the inventory and stats see now i could uh, write all of those uh, into a single callback uh, but 
uh, that's the point of it you are free to do anything you want with it if uh, this is looking exhausting to you you can rewrite this entire expression uh, in a for loop like this firstly let's rename our frames to uppercase Actually, let's remove that to the top of the expression and pass it to the constructor. Now we need our button, our frame. Now we have our button and the frame. We can rewrite the expression like this. Now this won't be profile, but state name. And this will be button. That will be frame. Now button activated connect. FSM change state to state name. Now, now we don't need any of those. Let's run again. What is that? Oh, okay. We don't need any of those anymore. Okay, see, it still works. I know this is overkill. Usually no one needs FSM to manage UI states. In fact, write enough ifs and fors and you're done. But still FSM provides simplicity and control. It's powerful, flexible. We have unlimited access on every step of every transition. So that's pretty much it. Feel free to tailor it to your needs, guys. And if you have further questions or concerns, you may find me in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Cheers.